TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem in today's top stories. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz asserts that leaders of terror organizations seeking to harm Israel are not safe wherever they may be hiding. The Iranian-aligned Houthis in Yemen pledge to join the Palestinian battle against Israel once their aspirations for Yemen are realized. Israeli officials and Western diplomats force pessimism over prospects of reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement with Iran. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz warned that if quiet on Israel's southern front would be disrupted by the terror groups in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, the Israeli defense establishment would use all the tools at its disposal to respond with force. In an interview with Israel's Khan State Television, Jerusalem's top defense official further leveled a threat to the leaders of Iranian proxies including Palestinian Islamic Jihad Secretary General Ziad El Nahara, asserting that he had no insurance policy anywhere he went and that leaders of terror organizations should be worried of Israel's capacity to reach them wherever they may be hiding. Meanwhile, it has been reported that Islamic Jihad Field Commander Taisir Jabri, who was killed at the start of Operation Breaking Dawn, was responsible for planning and executing an attack by means of anti-tank missiles on Israeli civilians from the Gaza Strip in the days that led to the Israeli-initiated operation. The planned attack, which the Iranian proxy ultimately failed to execute, was intended to deter Israel from persisting with its crackdown of Palestinian Islamic Jihad operatives and officials in the West Bank as part of Operation Waves Breaker. Meanwhile, during a military ceremony marking the end of Operation Breaking Dawn, Southern Command Commander Major General Eliezer Toledano said that the troops involved in the weekend offensive successfully fulfilled all of the prescribed objectives. מה היה מפתח להצלחה? לוחמים ולוחמות, חיילים וחיילות, נגדים ונגדות, קצינים וקצינות, עם רוח לחימה, עם נכונות להילחם כדי שרמת הביטחון תהיה רמת ביטחון גבוהה. General Toledano further stressed that the Israeli troops did an exceptional job and that within a minute's notice the IDF was prepared to launch another operation vis-à-vis -vis the terror groups in Gaza if Jerusalem deems it necessary. Meanwhile, overnight, IDF, ISA, or Shin Bet, and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counter-terrorist activities throughout the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, during which a number of terror operatives were apprehended. No injuries were reported among the Israeli forces. Meanwhile, in the Palestinian city of Nablus, Hundreds of Palestinian terror operatives and their supporters flooded the streets to partake in a burial procession of senior commander of Fatah El Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, who was killed during an intensive gun battle with Israeli Special Operations Forces. Following the burial, the mother of the terrorist was asked whether the death of her son, Ibrahim El Nabulsi, represented Israel's victory over Palestinians who seek to use force against Israel. Meanwhile, Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdelhayan 
held a phone conversation with Hamas leader Ismail Hania, during which he congratulated the latter for the Palestinian victory against Israel. While Tehran's top diplomat continued to voice repeated slogans detached from reality, sources familiar with the content of the conversation confirmed to TV7 that the Iranian foreign minister voiced dissatisfaction with the fact that Hamas did not join the Palestinian Islamic Jihad in its battle against Israel. Separately, in a desperate attempt to deter Israel from targeting leaders of Palestinian terror groups, including in Lebanon, Tehran instructed Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah to threaten Jerusalem. Speaking from an undisclosed bunker in Beirut, for fear of his own life, the leader of the Iranian proxy in Lebanon asserted that any Israeli action would be met with a response. أو في الفصائل الفلسطينية في خارج فلسطين محتلة ومنها لبنان في يوم عاشوراء نقول لهذا العدو إن أي اعتداء على أي إنسان في لبنان على أي إنسان في لبنان لن يبقى بدون عقاب ولن يبقى بدون رد Turning to Yemen, where tens of thousands of Iranian-backed Houthi militants flooded the streets of Sana'a city to voice support for the Palestinian terror group in their battle against Israel. And while the Houthis raised placards calling for the destruction of the United States and Israel, they pledged that once their efforts to secure Yemen would be complete, they will eagerly join their Palestinian brethren in their battle against the Jewish state. هذه الجموع الغفيرة في هذه الساحة وما عداها من الساحات في كل محافظات الجمهورية التي تحيي عاشوراء تؤكد تضامنها القاطع مع أبناء شعبنا الفلسطيني مع حركة الجهاد مع سرايا القدس ونحن بإذن الله عما قريب جنبا إلى جنب مع هذه القوة البطلة في مواجهة الصرف الصهيوني الغاصب كما نحن اليوم نواجه في الوقت نفسه العدوان السعودي والأمريكي الصهيوني الظالم it is interesting to note that while the Houthis agreed to a UN-brokered cessation of hostilities in recent weeks, intelligence officials have warned that Iran is blatantly exploiting this time to smuggle significant quantities of advanced weaponry to its proxy in Yemen. Moreover, in a meeting between the foreign minister of the internationally recognized Yemeni government of Abed Rabu Mansur Hadi, the Houthis have apparently already breached the terms of the presiding truce by refusing to lift their siege on the city of Taiz, where roughly 4.5 million civilians reside in catastrophic conditions. While the Iranian-backed Houthis refused to comment on allegations leveled against them, residents of the Houthi-controlled city of Sana'a voiced hope that peace would ultimately prevail. In other news, after the nuclear talks in Vienna have come to a close, the European Union said that delegations of the respective parties have returned to their capitals for political consultations on a final decision. Indeed, the four days of uh, talks, discussions and proximity talks in Vienna are now over. What can be negotiated and what could have been negotiated was actually negotiated and now it's reflected in the text which was put to the negotiators um, as the final text. Now, next steps are that uh, this is for them, for the participating countries uh, who were participating in the negotiation to consider to bring to their capitals, and then a political decision need to be made in each of the capitals whether they accept the text or not. High Representative Borrell, as the coordinator, expects that uh, decisive political decisions will be taken to sign this deal. The Iranians have reportedly agreed to relinquish their non-nuclear demands related to U.S. guarantees 
that future administrations will not scrap the deal once replacing the Biden administration and the removal of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from the designated list of foreign terrorist organizations. In exchange, the Iranians are now demanding that an outstanding investigation by the International Atomic Energy Agency into nuclear particles that were uncovered in undisclosed locations in Iran would be closed, a demand neither the United States nor its European allies are willing to accept. Therefore, according to Israeli officials and Western diplomats who spoke on condition of anonymity, the chance of Iran agreeing to the terms of renewing the 2015 Nuclear Safeguards Agreement is highly unlikely, despite it being a far less comprehensive version than what it supposedly was marketed as approximately seven years prior. Thank you for joining TV7 Israel News. It is important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you are blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Yair Pinto wishing you an Erev Mevorach, a blessed evening, and we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.